Ah, uh, I didn't see that one coming. Just a shocking development when it comes to inventory this week. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. And we're also going to do a quick interest rate update and talk about some relevant current events. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then nope, I am here to help. So the decrease in interest rates is working. This was a busy weekend. And it wasn't just for me. One of the offers that we got accepted this week was going up against six other offers. And in case you were wondering, he was able to do a home inspection, but we had to put a higher inspection threshold amount in there. And we also had to offer appraisal gap coverage. And obviously, we went over asking price. Just a heads up, for spring buyers, it looks like it's going to get a little crazy. By the way, if you're an investor who's looking for off-market houses, then reach out, as I would love to hear about what your buy boxes are. We get off-market opportunities each and every day. And I just love to play a little game of matchmaking. And just as a heads up, these off-market opportunities are for cash or hard money only investments, so no conventional financing is allowed when it comes to buying these properties. But let's jump in and dig into the single-family market stats. Now, you kind of can see it here. The drawdown of inventory, it leveled out. There are now 4,068 single-family houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This means that there was 13.8% fewer houses on the market today than 28 days ago as inventory fell by 58 units last week. Now, historically speaking, we see inventory levels continue to drop at big numbers at this point of the year. So what was the reason? Was it because a bunch of new listings hit, hitting the market or a big decrease in buyer demand? Let's find out. This graph shows the prominence of what happened much better. It's like the fall drawn out just hit the pause button last week. When we look at the inventory gap of 2023 versus 2022, then we now have 423 fewer houses on the market than the same time last year. To put this 423 houses in perspective, that number was 566 last week. And then when it compared to 2021, the gap expanded to there being now 983 more houses on the market today and compared to the same week in 2021. And that's a 65 unit increase this week. Saying in a much more elegant way, buyers today have 983 more houses to look at today than in 2021 and 423 fewer houses to look at compared to the same time in 2022. I mean, you can barely see the blue light. It's so similar to the week last year. There were 621 single family houses that came on the market this week and this was 11 or 1.8% more units than the same week last year when 610 single family houses came on the market. That four week rolling average of 667 units, but as we've mentioned, from now until the end of the year, we won't really be worried about these four week rolling averages as the market continues its seasonal slowdown. Now, under agreements, didn't see the balance that we generally see this week. We had 554 homes go under agreement, which was 18.1% less than the same week last year when 676 single family houses went under agreement. Now, last week, we broke out of that 10 to 15% range that we've pretty much been seeing for the last couple months, but we were 7%. Now, this week, we broke out of that range again, but we were now at 18%. So last week, it was negative 3%, and this week, it's a plus 3% out of the range. In other words, I think the data is saying that the boosted under agreement activity from last week may have cannibalized a little bit from this week's under agreement activity. Now, that four-week rolling average is 742 units, so we were below the four-week rolling average with under agreements as well. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 1.8%, while under agreements, they were off by 18.1%. Now, there were 913 single-family houses that closed last week for an average sales price of $753,000 and a median sales price of $610,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were actually down by 9.3% as there are 1,007 single-family homes that closed this week last year. Now, months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months, that's considered a seller's market. But the closer you get to zero, the stronger and more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory ticked up to 1.57 months from last week's 1.54 months. And the 1.7 months this week is compared to the 1.38 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. You knew it was coming. I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, on to the condo market. The condo market saw the same thing as the single-family market. The inventory declined. It leveled off. The pause button was hit here, too. 
We have 2,321 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this is a 39 unit decrease from last week. Currently, there are 11.6 fewer condos on the market today than 28 days ago. And I know I'm a data nerd, but next week's going to be so interesting for me. We have been doing a great job threading the needle between 2021 and 2022 when it comes to inventory in the condo market. But it looks like that could all change as we are now toe to toe with inventory levels of 2022. We now have 222 more condos on the market today than at the same time in 2021, and only 10 fewer condos on the market when compared to 2022 inventory levels. Again, just like the single family data, you can barely see the blue line this week as it was so similar to last week, last year. Now, there were 296 condos that came on the market with a four-week rolling average of 287 condos. We listed seven or 2.4% more condos this week than the same week last year when 289 condos came on the market. Again, just like the single family market, we didn't see the bouts but under agreements that we would have, well, really expected. This week, we put 216 homes under agreement. Now, this 216 units was 63 or 22.6% shy of last year's numbers when we put 279 condos under agreement. Now, as a side note, 216 units this week could be compared to 215 properties that went under agreement last week. Now, that four-week rolling average is 289 units. So, 2.4% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year, while selling 22.6% fewer condos. And that would explain the inventory growth that we saw this week. There were 397 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $696,000 and a median sales price of $540,000. Now, this same week last year, there were 373 condos that sold. So sales levels were down by 6.4%. And months of inventory actually increased to 2.2 months from last week's 2.16 months. And this is compared to the months of inventory levels of 1.91 months this week last year. Hey, Chess, you could just do me a huge favor. Can you hit that like button that's right down there? Just believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me and the channels. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So I appreciate you considering subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. When I looked at the chart this week, the Miley Cyrus song, it's a party in the USA. You know that one? Yeah, that popped to mind. Continued improvement in the interest rate world. Rates were down this week. Three new pre approvals this week, and you know what was on all of them? An interest rate in the high sixes. Rates are now at a three-month low. I could see them leveling out a bit from here until the next big economic news, but ultimately, Fed Chairman Powell, he spoke about how they could actually increase the Fed fund rates again, and while the market, oh, it just yawned at them. I can't stress enough. The more these rates go down, then the hotter this market's going to get. The higher this market gets and the more pricing will jump with buyers getting worse terms like not being able to do a home inspection. Now is the time to buy because the ingredients for the spring cake, well, they're just get starting to come together. And it's starting to look like it's going to be a tough market in the spring and possibly all of next year for buyers. Buy now before that cake of higher prices and crappy terms, it gets baked. But what if I told you that I'm actually hoping that the Fed doesn't decrease rates? At least yet. Before the name calling begins, let's let's talk about why. It's important to say that all the big money is betting a decrease in rates in the first quarter of 2024. And I think they could be right. And my reasoning for this is as simple as it's an election year. A booming economy, well, that helps the current administration. But booming at what expense? I have talked about a head fig with inflation rates in the past. And the reason I've said this is because I've actually gone back in history and looked and what happened in the 1970s, you know, the last high inflationary environment, everyone felt that inflation was under control. So they had a huge celebratory party and started loosening policy in 1976. Not only have inflation roaring back even worse than it was before in the years after. Do the 18% interest rates in 1980 that were needed to stamp out inflation? Sometimes our best intended wishes aren't what's really best for us. And while I am reporting the news of lower rates and a pickup environment, I, I don't think it's a really a great thing for our overall economy. It's the political playbook 101. Rather than really dealing with the issue, let's band-aid it on and kick it down the road, only to have that can grow into a much bigger problem. I guess what I'm saying is that we should be careful what we wish for because there are always consequences. Wish for lower interest rates. Enjoy a hotter market with higher pricing and worse terms. Wish for a market collapse. Well, enjoy a depression-like economy where friends and family lose their jobs, their savings, and their homes. 
After all, it's a recession when your neighbor loses their job. It's a depression when you lose yours. I just released my last monthly market report for 2023. It's absolutely insane. If you miss it, then you should definitely take a look. Plus, I just did another video talking about the market returns for the city of Boston. Watch that one too and let me know what you think. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs, whether you're looking to buy in the next nine or 90 days, it doesn't matter. I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, well, then we can help you too. We can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a, a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. Also, should you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a home, then I truly appreciate you passing along my information. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information and then we'll reach out to you. Until next time.